Hello and welcome to the Bolsa Chica Conservancy's Public Animal Feeding Spotlight. Today we are going to feed one of our snakes, Victoria. She is a California king snake. Uh, so just some updates on the Conservancy. We are currently not open to the public, but we do have an information booth set up outside so you can come visit us, ask questions, get trail guides, and of course donate to us because uh, we still have to feed our animals uh, even though we're closed to the public. So any donations are welcome. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put Victoria in her feeding tank here. So uh, just, a, just a warning to everyone, we feed our snakes live mice. Uh, we think it's a good enrichment. So if you're not comfortable with that, feel free to tune out now and you can join us for our other spotlights on animals that um, don't eat live prey. So I will grab a mouse. So we feed our snakes in a separate enclosure from their home so that they don't associate their house with food. <laughs> in the wild, king snakes eat uh, rodents as well as other snakes. And she's got them. So she is a constrictor. She is not venomous. Uh, so what she'll do is wrap up her prey and then um, eat it once it's been suffocated. So she is not venomous, but she is actually immune to rattlesnake venom. So king snakes can eat small rattlesnakes in the wild. And so <laughs> there are different methods for eating with snakes. There are venomous snakes and constrictors like Victoria here. Um, so the constrictors will do this where they catch their prey and constrict it. Uh, the venomous snakes will bite them and then follow them until uh, they've succumbed to the venom. Um, and so it's important for them to kill their prey before they eat it so that they don't basically uh, fight back and injure them while they're trying to eat. Uh, and these snakes will swallow their prey whole. So this mouse, I'm not sure if you had a chance to see kind of the size comparison, but it's basically twice the size of her head, if not bigger. Uh, so you can imagine how hard it is to eat something that's bigger than your head. And these guys don't have any arms or utensils to eat their food. Uh, so they have adapted to be able to eat these large prey. They have a very interesting anatomy. So their jaw is able to open really wide um, and that is in part due to their bottom jaw having two separate bones instead of one bone like ours is. Uh, they also have a different kind of configuration of their jaw um, so it can open much wider. Uh, their scales are very stretchy so they're able to squeeze the little mouse in there. Um, and their scales can um, expand, their skin expands, so that they can uh, fit the mouse down their throat. Uh, they have a very interesting internal anatomy, as you can guess, they are an oddly shaped animal. They're long and skinny, so a lot of their organs have to be um, adjusted for that. So they actually have a really long esophagus, which is the part that connects your mouth to your stomach. Uh, so the mouse will go almost halfway down the body before it gets to the stomach. Uh, they also have basically only one functioning lung. Since it's long and skinny, their lung is just a really long and skinny um, organ. And this helps fit into their strange shaped body. Uh, most of their body is just muscles and backbone. It's mostly what a snake is made of. Um, and so their jawbone we mentioned earlier is two separate bones and that also helps them to maneuver their food when they're trying to uh, swallow it. So right now what she's going to do is, so the mouse is no longer alive and she can sense it by um, the feelings. She can feel when the heart is no longer beating. Uh, so what she's gonna do is try to find the head Usually snakes eat head first. Um, it helps them swallow it uh, the way that the bones are and the fur. So, oh, it looks like she's already found the head down there in the corner there. 
So what she's going to do is move her jaw back and forth, the two separate bones in the bottom, to help kind of walk the mouse down her throat. Let me turn it. <laughs> oh, there we go. So she's got herself in a nice little pretzel here, so it's kind of hard to see what she's doing. Uh, but she is starting at the head first. Um, I'm sure she will untangle and show us a little bit. Uh, but she will digest the whole mouse, the bones, the fur, all the organs. Uh, so some animals can't digest bones and fur, animals like birds. So um, raptors and owls, they will actually regurgitate or throw up the bones and fur portion of the animal in a pellet. Um, so now we can get a little better look. She's going back and forth. You can see her head going back and forth is how she's moving those two bottom jaw bones to help her swallow this giant mouse and a little bit about the senses of snakes uh, so their strongest sense is actually their sense of smell uh, for people it's our sense of vision we use that mostly to interpret what's going on in the world uh, but snakes rely mostly on smell and they smell a little bit differently than how we smell uh, they actually have a special organ at the top of their mouth called a vomeral nasal organ and that helps them use their tongue to smell. So when they're flicking their tongue in and out, they're actually smelling the air and that organ helps them uh, convert those chemicals in the air to a sense of smell. And if you've ever noticed that a snake's tongue has two parts on the end, it has a fork on the end, uh, that's how they can tell the direction of the smell. So just like we have two ears, we are really good at telling the direction of sounds. Uh, snakes are really good at telling the direction of smells. And their second strongest sense is their sense of feeling. Um, so they can feel vibrations from people walking on trails or from mice. Um, so they'll usually... Uh, Tell, they can usually tell if when you're there before you see them, so that's why snakes aren't super common to see out on the trails. Out here at Bolsa Chica, we do have California king snakes out on the trails, like Victoria here. Uh, we also have gopher snakes, and we do have venomous rattlesnakes, so um, keep your eyes and ears uh, peeled for that if you're out on the trails. Especially in this hot weather, they like to come out and uh, sun themselves on the trails, so be cautious. So we, look, she is a very fast eater. You guys are lucky today. Uh, <laughs> so she's down to her, her uh, little spaghetti tail, and you can already see where the mouse is behind her head, kind of going down. And if you look real close, uh, she is moving her body in an S-shaped motion right behind her head. And that's another way that they can help swallow their food. Uh, it helps kind of push the mouse down through her esophagus. So now she's all finished with that. And uh, we will let her uh, digest her food a little bit before we pick her up because snakes are capable of regurgitating their food and that's not fun for either of us. Uh, so just wanna say thank you for joining us for our animal feeding spotlight and we hope you can join us next week. Uh, take care and stay safe.